That's fine. Yeah, it's it not is. like we're saying anything well, that people life. can't hear. Well, it wouldn't be scripted if it. It'd be too scripted if we were like. It'd be like a reality show where it's actually scripted. Did it work? And then it wouldn't be a reality. Did I tell you that you should really watch Candidates vs. Handyman on Netflix? Yes, I have read it on. Have you seen it? It's amazing. You really should watch it. If we if we made an actual reality show, it's probably what it would be like. Nice. Yeah. Camera's over there. <laughs> Welcome to Philabot Live. In this video, we're going over 3D printing with Craftsman vacuum nozzles. Woo! Ah. Oh. What's that to it? That, no, it, it's how durable the EX6 is. Come on. A plastic vacuum nozzle is not going to dent the That's very true. Thing. That's Things, very true. That's why it takes like seven people to lift it. That's rugged. That's not a Craftsman. No, that is a Stanley. We recycled all the Craftsman. <laughs> oh, you know, we talked about not doing puns, but it's going to be hard to not do puns with vacuum nozzles. Sucks. Yeah. Where do you want to start? Where should we start? I think we should talk about where the heck we got enough vacuum parts. Yeah. That we were going to grind them up. And turn them into something and, useful. And then make them into filament. Okay. And then print them into our test print and more vacuum parts. One vacuum part. We could say we printed a bunch of them. There's 10,000 10, of camera. those. <laughs> yeah, so uh, where did we get a lot of a lot of vacuum parts. Um, a local company uses vacuum and they did not need the nozzles and they asked us if we wanted to uh, to recycle them and we jumped on it and loaded our cars up real quick. Because um, we can't say no. We have a hard time that saying. Would, when someone says, hey, do you have a use for this? Um, some of us. Who? <laughs> Always say yes. And we're not going to talk about who, it's and not like we're not we... going to pan around the warehouse, the, the, the lab, and show you all the various things that are here. That um... It's not like we went somewhere and like bought a 3D printer, or... It's not like there's a bus outside. Or that. That's personal. Oops. That's all personal. <laughs> Alright, uh, so yeah, they said... Here you go. Here you go, and we said sure. We took it. So we took the, you know, there was, there's three big boxes of these vacuum nozzles. They were all the same uh, plastic. We actually weren't sure what grade they were. There was no markings on them. Um, we did a little digging on the interwebs, uh, used that Google thing, and determined that this was uh, probably, probably, poly, <laughs> that is a tongue twister. Poly, probably, probably polypropylene. Polypropylene? Which is a common plastic they would use. It's a little flexible. It's got some uh, give, pretty forgiving, and uh, pretty durable even at, at when it's thin. Mm -hmm. Keeps it lightweight. I don't know if you can see like in that. Thin but walls. I'm sure everybody has a vacuum, and everybody has vacuum attachments. Or knows what a vacuum is. If you don't know what a <laughs> vacuum is, you're probably not watching this. <laughs> right. Uh, so then. You know, these don't have any stickers, so that was simple. We, uh... Yeah, nothing, we had to guess. Yeah. Chantel uh, threw them right in the grinder, I heard. So Otto said that she just dumped them in and it clogged the grinder. Isn't that right? Sounds like something she would do. <laughs> Taking out her aggressions on the vacuum parts. Completely dumped it. Just one box and it's hilarious. We have a video of it. We're gonna... We have to get that up somewhere. We will. Um, so we ground them up, turn them into the grindings you see here. And they're, uh, they're a little rubbery, kind of squishy. Because it's it's the polypropylene. It's got that it's got that squish. Squish. I am gonna open. It. Oh yeah. You know, it almost looks like uh, chunks of rubber or chunks of asphalt. Yeah. I could do this all day. Don't knock that over. Is there anything else I should do, Ken? Okay. So we ground them up, and then because that's what we do. And then we, and then we extrude it. Then we make filament. Cause that's what we do. We make filament. Nice. Um, so the filament, this is where it gets a little interesting. Um, yeah. So the we last couple weeks when we talked about Lego and what else we've we been talking about recently, uh, things that we've been making filament from. Uh, field prints. Uh, those are PLA. Yep. Yeah. And PLA. You know, when we've been talking recently, pretty much everything we've talked about has been really 
Like, hey, this worked, cool. Somewhat easy to extrude. Yeah, we didn't have to, we didn't have a lot of work, but um, we this, found this to be a little different. This is a little tricky. Mm. Um, you know, we were able to do this whole study, but when we were extruding, uh, Josh mentioned that this material came out uh, oval. I was gonna say ovally, but the, I'm gonna say the ovality of this material was, uh, was off, right? So we were shooting our laser line across one section of it and it was measuring the, the 1.75. Uh, decent tolerances, yep, uh, decent tolerances, but then when you looked at the side, the width, it was actually uh, larger. So it was over, I think some sections when I was printing was over like 1.8 wow. millimeters up to 1.9. And once you start getting that high into the two, uh, it jams in the hot end and that really... It's not good filming. It's not good. It's not fun printing with that. So uh, it was interesting to make into filament. And that'll also lead into the end when we talk about samples. Um, but, you know, we made filament and it didn't really cut out when we were extruding. Um, we have three or four of these spools around the shop. Um, we just weren't really happy with uh, the ovality. And we think that's, that's the melt flow of the polymer. So, yeah. oh, that was a twisted word. Um, polymer, polymer. We need to do those... Uh, the polypropylene polymer? Yeah. We need to do the warm-ups before the, the uh, lives. Red leather, yellow leather. What's the other one? Nah, that's the singing that's one. one um, yeah, what was I talking about? You're talking about the fact that we have a few spools <laughs> have of this hanging around. Around the shop. And, you know, we were able to do some stuff with them, but, you know, one of the things that you'll notice us not say today, if you've been watching our live videos mm -hmm. on Thursdays at 3 p.m., in case you're watching this after the fact, we're not doling out samples of this. Yeah, unfortunately. Because we're not going to send you crap. Because it really sucks. It, it, just, it didn't work if you want to show yeah. the prints that we've made now. The high shrink rate, and actually this was an interesting uh, thing. So to get, I mean, we all, you know, people who have worked with 3D printing, they know that warpage is a pain in the butt, and mm -hmm. having it really helps, you know, make a print. Um, you'll see at the bottom, this print has this texture on it, and this is actually from, we took the, Velcro sheet, I'm not sure if it was the hook or the loop side. I think it was the hook side. Yeah, the, hook side. the hook side, stuck it to the bed and printed right on top of it. Um, and then we realized we could have done a raft and then printed this sample on it and we wouldn't have had this, you know, the, the pattern in it. Um, but the Velcro worked great. Uh, there's gonna be more to come on that. And I think as we, yeah. as we play with these different materials with different warpage and we aren't sure what the you know, actual grade is, um, we're gonna need to play around with the bed adhesion. Um, it's an important piece. It's an under it is. under discussed it is, yeah. element of 3D printing. If you yeah. have a if, if your the bed sucks, the print's gonna suck. At least the bottom mm -hmm. layer, and most likely the rest of it. Right. So that was the biggest thing. There's a lot of warpage with this part. I think if we played with it more, well, this material when we were printing, if we played with it more, I'm sure it would have worked better. Um, so yeah, we we did a simple, very simple print with this. Uh, it is a Y adapter. Why did we do that? Ha! We did that because our offices are really messy and we wanted to clean twice as fast. Twice as fast, or one oh one person twice as fast, or two people at the same or speed. Or we're planning on building the world's most um, colluged vacuum system. Redneck engineered uh, central air system. We're just gonna have hoses running all over the place with couplers. Mm -hmm. We'll just run around and connect them like old school, like the original like uh, telephone wiring where you had to connect, physically connect. I think you just dated yourself. I'm sorry. Nobody else is. <laughs> Might as well. Uh, you can see where the part has a lot of shrinkage. Sorry, I didn't mean to take that out of your hand cap. Uh, but the shrinkage. So but this was, works. It works. You know, it's, we printed it. Yeah. This was a vacuum piece. Right. And we turned it into a different vacuum piece which we'll probably recycle again because it didn't come out that well. Right. Now, one of the things that we, we didn't talk about as we were talking about the filament, um, you know, we've got some theories on how we might actually be able to improve the output mm -hmm. that might come up again in yes. future studies. So we, we, maybe we should talk about that. Yeah, so uh, when this filament comes out of the extruder, it's just coming out of the hot nozzle, yeah. hitting the air, and then we have our air path system. This beautiful guy. Uh, right in front of the nozzle. Um, Fillbot.com. <laughs> Is it Fillbot. on the back? Yes. Um, 
the air is just blowing, and I'm, I'm sure Kevin would love to get into the theory of this at some point, but uh, the air is just hitting part of the filament and not cooling it, mm. uh, solidifying it as a round. Um, and that's you know, what the issue is. So we think that a water bath mm. would be the next step here. Um, we haven't really you know, developed a water bath or made one. You don't really have to develop a water bath. Um, <laughs> official <laughs> filament water bath. You buy a bucket and official sticker. filament cooling water. You put a sticker It's got on a it. sticker on the outside. Well, you might have to use distilled water. That's a good point. Yeah, I don't know about that. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be the next step is playing with water yeah. and seeing uh, how that helps and how it you know, works with different materials. Sure. Um, water has a higher uh, specific heat, I think that's the word. So it can, uh, takes more energy to either heat it or cool it um, compared to air. And that's why it works so well with cooling plastic or filament yeah. as it's passing through it. Um, and this might be a good time. If anybody out there listening, watching, has experience with water cooling, the filament that they're making, whether it's on our machine or maybe something else. Yeah. You know, we'd love to hear from you. you know, if you're willing to share what you've learned, maybe we can get you on the air. If not, you know, we'd just like to pick your brain. We just need some water. Um, Where do we find water? That, uh, I think that concludes it. You know, I, this was one of the interesting studies that we've done so far. Uh, we've, well, we've really only done two. There are going to be more to come. Uh, but this was the first one that kind of, well, not failed that we talked about, but didn't. Yeah, because I mean, we were able to make something with it, but it just wasn't to our standards. Right. It wasn't as successful as the Lego pieces. Right. But what it does is it, it poses a lot of questions on how we can improve that. And we're kind of taking those questions forward yeah. as we do other materials, as we do other products. And play with, yeah. You know, people learn by making mistakes and not that we made a quote unquote mistake, but right. you know, things didn't go perfectly. So oh, we're yeah. learning from it. You know, we didn't mention that those nozzles were actually gonna be thrown away. So that's interesting. Well, we did say we recycled them. Oh, okay. So the nozzles were gonna be thrown, gonna be thrown away. They were gonna be thrown away. So that's why we took them and right. turned them into, at this point, low quality filament. At some point <laughs> it'll be better quality filament and we'll move on from there. Um, any questions? No. Aww. Sweet. Well, until next time, thank you for tuning in. Let us know if you do have any questions. Uh, and if anybody wants to read the full write-up, you know, oh, yeah. people may have noticed that Tyler is referring to a printout, a multi-page printout with photos and, and just documentation on everything we've done. We're putting out the information of these studies on our website, philbot.com. There's a blog. And we referenced, we linked that from the blog. Yep, right so, from the blog. And then uh, I just check out the blog at philbot.com and feel free to write us, call us, social at us, you know, whatever works. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Till next time. Thank you.